Welcome back to Basad Morning Call. Hope you're having a good Friday morning and set for a long day and then a good weekend ahead. But before that, we need to discuss quite a few stocks. And to help us out with that, we're joined by a market expert, Anand Tandem. Uh, morning, Anand. Uh, thanks so much for joining in. Well, Anand, you know, the news that came in just uh, an hour or so ago was that HCL Tech, they are pulling back on their guidance and they're guiding now to grow at the lower end of what they said earlier. Your, your take on HCL Tech valuation-wise, it's always been at a bit of a discount. So your take on the IT space as well as HCL Tech? Well, as we were discussing a bit earlier, I think the IT space is, uh, you know, generally been underweight for most funds for the last few months, at least the last six months, largely because of expectations of slowdown. Uh, HCL's guidance was a little bit uh, aggressive, so I don't uh, find it surprising that they are slowly cutting back. By and large, you know, just about double-digit growth on the top line is what you should expect. Bottom line would be smaller than that for this year. And therefore, the only question that you're looking at is from a valuation perspective. My own belief is that the market generally is uh, somewhat uh, uh, overpriced. And consequent to that, the IT sector, even though it appears more expensive from a historical perspective, is uh, not particularly out of line. And therefore, I would kind of maintain a neutral uh, stance at this stage, which means that for most funds, I would imagine that you should expect to see a little bit of buying. Okay, I expect to see a little bit of buying, but you're maintaining a neutral stance on IT, got that. What about Paytm? The buyback announcement has been the subject of a lot of scrutiny. Uh, how would you read into it? And if you are, or if someone is a long-term investor in Paytm, what's the suggestion now? So first of all, the easier question to answer is the long-term part. If you are a long-term investor, you have no reason to be in Paytm even today. I mean, there is no particular uh, area where, we are, where you can see a clear growth path. You could argue that they are going to become a, a you know a lending company, a market. But until they reach any kind of uh, market leadership or near market leadership position, I don't think that that is uh, visible. Uh, and the valuations still assume a lot of optimism. Uh, the other question about whether they should be doing a buyback, I think, uh, you know, the management is trying to signal the fact that they personally feel that the stock is underpriced and that they have a path to profit. Uh, if that works out to be the correct assumption, then obviously you would probably have got it at a good price. So you may want to kind of get in from that signal point of view. But my own argument is that, uh, you know, uh, talking is one thing, executing is another. And other than the fact that they have executed very well during the pandemic, where they went out and got a whole lot of accounts uh, for their uh, payment side of the business, which has no path to uh, profits. Uh, I have yet to see anything which makes me believe that there is something that we should be really looking at. You know, uh, this is a it's going to be an interesting thing to talk about, right, uh, Anand? You know, I uh, I looked at the amount of money, and this was we'll try and pull the graphic up from. Uh, this was a piece I did last Friday. Uh, the amount of money which Paytm is raised. Uh, as a private company, right, till the time, in the private life cycle, till the time it hit the IPO, was about $4.5 billion or so. Uh, and its current market cap, I think, I mean, I'm not sure, but it's around there. You know, this is uh, uh, so sobering, right, as a data point. The market cap of a company is uh, equal to, it actually fell below the equity it raised as a private company. Uh, so, it just tells you uh, the, the, the amount of uh, destruction, wealth destruction it has happened, even before, uh, for investors, even before it came to the market. Just a quick point, uh, though, uh, you, you know, one can make the case that when, uh, for these digital companies, I mean, it was premised on the fact that growth rates are going to be very high, the market opportunity is very large, but typically you would do a buyback when you don't have better use for the cash, right? So that's the, that's the flip side, isn't it, uh, Anand? You're doing a buyback now, well within your rights to do one, uh, but what are your thoughts? No, you're absolutely right. Typically, you would expect to see a buyback when the prices have fallen dramatically and the growth rate in the company is slower mm. than what you would think that, uh, you know, uh, the company can generate through the uh, stock market. But in this case, the question is that, you know, perhaps the only way you can generate anything is through the stock market because the company ain't going anywhere. So uh, from that perspective, uh, you know, it's perfectly uh, valid reason to be going doing a buyback. I think it's more a signaling de device. Clearly, it's not as if you're going to buy a huge potload of, uh, of your uh, shares back. So it is essentially telling the market that, hey, you know, the insider thinks that it is a good time and a good price to be looking to buy. So I don't think you should read anything more in terms of corporate strategy beyond the signaling.
Anand, you know, yesterday Sonia had put out, uh, she had covered a note by Numura. Well, they were suggesting that for lower end vehicles, there is some discounts out there, uh, which could be good news for customers. But the broader read through is that maybe demand is not that good. How do you approach this space? Well, clearly we've seen that for a while that the only place where there is a demand right now is on the more on the premium side, whether it is vehicles or any other kind of category of consumption goods. So, you know, and you can understand that because clearly there hasn't been any kind of significant job growth. There has not been a significant wage growth. And in rural India, most of the wage, uh, the wage growth has been a negative in, term, in real terms. So as a consequence, you, we have yet to see a demand revival in rural India. And whatever is happening in urban India is happening at the higher end of the income curve. And uh, that is why we are seeing SUVs and uh, you know premium goods doing well. So you can see people, uh, flights going full. You can see tourism and uh, hotels doing well, but you don't see the lower end of the consumption uh, picking up in any significant way. So I think that trend is what you are uh, calling out right now. And uh, you know uh, it's likely to persist till we find either a more broad-based kind of uh, wage and income growth, uh, for which I have I see no evidence so far, but it could happen. And if that happens, then you will probably see a growth. Otherwise, uh, you have to go back and rely on the fact that uh, the, uh, the agri uh, seed, the crop this year may be better because in the second season, apparently sowing has done very well. Okay. In fact, let's put this question to the management themselves, right? Uh, 